that brings us then to the case law. And we've got a couple of really significant um, decisions on the cases to, to sort of tell us what this means. So Ruby ended up in the Supreme Court. Um, the child was born to the respondent who was in a same-sex relationship with the appellant. Um, following their separation, the child lived with the respondent, had contact with the appellant, appellant tried to increase contact, respondent removed the child to Pakistan. Um, so the appellant commenced Children Act proceedings after the child's removal, later applied for the child's summary return under the inherent jurisdiction as that would also facilitate contact. Um, at first instance, Mrs Justice Hogg, as she was then, held that as the child had lost her habitual residence on her permanent removal from England, the court had no jurisdiction to entertain proceedings under the Children Act, and she declined to exercise inherent jurisdiction based on the child's nationality, as the case was a contact application, which fell outside the inherent jurisdiction jurisprudence. The Court of Appeal dismissed the appellant's appeal and held that extreme circumspection is required when deciding to exercise inherent jurisdiction when a child's outside the jurisdiction, and inherent jurisdiction cannot be exercised where the order sought is for care of or contact with the child. Um, so a return order can be made under the inherent jurisdiction, however a return will not be ordered where the applicant's ultimate motive is to make an application for a child arrangements order regulating contact as soon as the child gets back to the jurisdiction. <coughs> so the court upheld the principle that the inherent jurisdiction is used for protective, not custodial purposes. And then when it got to the Supreme Court, um, the decision of the Court of Appeal was discussed in Obiter. Um and there were some quite different views about <laughs> the old use of the inherent jurisdiction. Um, so um, Lady Hale and Lord Tolson um, said that it could be used to prevent a child being left in jurisdictional limbo, so where there's no habitual evidence. Um, it need not be at the extreme end of the spectrum, but it should be used with caution, and there are three things that you should consider, um, which are international schemes, comity and enforceability, um, so, yeah, it should be used with caution because if it is, it may conflict with the jurisdictional scheme applicable between countries in question, um, might result in conflicting decisions between those two countries and might be a nightmare to enforce it. Um, in Ruby, there was no applicable treaty between the UK and Pakistan. Um, it was unlikely the court in Pakistan would entertain an application from the appellant and there were possible steps that could be taken to persuade the respondent to obey the order. Um, so they established that a child of British nationality is entitled to the child in, is protected, blah, 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 is entitled to the court's protection. But the question to consider is whether the circumstances are such that a British child requires that protection. Then Lord Sumption on the other side basically said it's really problematic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the continued existence of the inherent jurisdiction, where there is already lots of statutory jurisdiction doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he noted that in Reby, the appellant was asking the court to exercise its inherent jurisdiction to order the child's return to the UK, but such orders should only be made in protective circumstances. So, for, for example, in abduction cases, uh, forced marriage cases, female genital mutilation cases. Um, in this instance, um, it was concluded that the habitual register hadn't changed. Yeah, they sort of ducked it, don't they? Yeah. So you've got these obiter remarks because they actually say, oh, never lost a habitual residence, so it's all fine. So it's all good chat we just had. <laughs> yes. but, um, <laughs> yeah. But so the use of the inherent jurisdiction had to be approached with great caution or circumspection, but its exercise was not limited to dire and exceptional cases. The real question was whether the British child required protection. But it didn't really matter here anyway. So then we come. To re M. To re M. And Lord Justice Moylan more recently. Yeah. Uh, um, <coughs> so, Reby establishes that um, the use of the inherent jurisdiction isn't limited to extreme cases, but it should be for protective purposes. Like, um, in re M, um, father of British and Algerian nationality appealed against the exercise of the inherent jurisdiction to order return of his 13 year old daughter to the UK. Um, she was born in the UK, moved to Algeria, lived most of her life in Algeria. Mum returned to the UK um, shortly after they moved to Algeria. 
um, alleging domestic violence, but she did nothing to seek the return of the children at the time. Um, in 2018, um, the father and the brother, the subject child was the daughter, um, so her brother, um, returned to the UK. Um, the brother alleged that the father had been violent towards him and his sister, and that he was planning to force her to marry. Um, the mother asked the court to invoke the inheritance jurisdiction to make her daughter a ward of the court and secure her return to the UK. Um, judge had all evidence from mother and father. Mother's evidence was largely based on what her son had told her. Um, he also had access to a report of a welfare check that was conducted on the child by the consular staff at the Algerian embassy, where she basically said she was quite happy. Um, is it Maratha, first digit? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the judge concluded that the totality of the evidence corroborated what the brother had said about ill treatment. So he made a child award of the court, um, ordered her immediate return so that a full welfare inquiry could be made here. Um, didn't make the forced marriage protection order, but it went to the Court of Appeal. Um, and it was apparent that except for the power to make orders under Section 8 of the Children Act 1959 in connection with matrimonial proceedings, the Family Law Act 1986 prohibited the inherent, inherent jurisdiction from being used to give care of a child to any person or provide co for contact and only gave the court jurisdiction when the child was habitually resident or present within the UK. Um, although it established that the situation didn't need to be at the extreme end of the spectrum, the question was whether the child required protection. There therefore need, had to be sufficiently compelling circumstances to require it or make it necessary for the court to exercise the jurisdiction. Um, and in this circumstance, the substance, the substantive threshold hadn't been crossed. So the judge was wrong to order return. There were basically things that they could have done in Algeria and they didn't consider the report properly. And yeah, it's wrong. So don't do it.